Hi, and welcome to another filler video before the next Z80 update. I won't lie about the status of the Z80, and it is not very optimistic. I cannot get anything displayed on screen yet, and there seems to be some kind of bus conflict going on when I execute specific code. So unfortunately, expect more of these videos about OPCs to come out before the next big update. Today we will be looking at a mechanical issue, but I think today's problem plays an important role in terms of future-proofing this machine. So without further ado, let's get into the ASD286. So let's take a look at today's problem. First, I will remove the monitor because we won't be needing that today. And second, I will remove the memory expansion card so that we can take a closer look at the problem. Wow, it flew out. And for today's repairs, we don't need a keyboard either. Okay, now all the unnecessary parts have been removed and we now have basically a bare motherboard. As you can see, when I press on it, the motherboard kind of flexes a little bit, which is normal behavior for a PCB. It is not a ideal rigid body. However, this should not happen when the motherboard is being put in a chassis properly because there are mounting holes here and here to support the motherboard and to prevent it from bending like this. What I'm concerned about is that this motherboard might flex so much that it develop a crack and as a result a broken trace. And if that happens, it will be next to impossible to diagnose because the crack will be in the micrometer level, but it will be sufficient to break all electric connections. Or worse, break partial electric connections and make this motherboard so unstable that it's not usable anymore. This problem may be fixable, and it may be not, and you will soon see why. But in either case, I'm going to release this video to YouTube because why not? Also, you can see this motherboard is like moving a lot because I've not put in any screws in case that this motherboard is broken. But as we have proved in the last video, it is not. I think it deserves a better support. And the first thing to do is to remove the motherboard from the chassis in order to reveal the supporting structure behind it. Now you can see the problem. We can see two round holes here and here where those mounting holes of the motherboard are. I think there were several of this metal supporting structure I don't know what they are called, in those holes. But in order to mount a standard AT motherboard in this chassis, the last owner of this motherboard removed those supporting structures, which might render this operation a failure. Because when we flip the chassis, we'll see that these holes are actually drilled on the bottom of the chassis so that those mounting structures are removed by brute force, which are probably irreversible. I'm going to find new ways to support this motherboard without those mounting structures. Okay, here's what I came up with. Uh, I have to add another mounting pole. I think that's what it's called here. And of course, you can see this is what I came up with as a substitution of these two missing poles, uh, a big piece of foam. I do have to slice it, I first cut it and then slice it and then trim it to the exact same height as the poles and almost cut my thumb during the process, you can see it here, it almost cut through the skin. I mean this is not the best solution but believe it or not it is the solution that the original owner came up with when he or she wanted to just support that AT motherboard because this chest is not designed for an AT style motherboard. But I put a bigger piece of foam here. The original foam was like this big and there's another piece here and here. 
I don't remember clearly, but this one is just for supporting the, the ISA slots. And the reason is that this foam is a good insulator of heat. So I did have circumstances when I put pieces of a foam underneath the motherboard and that causes the CPU or other chip to overheat and basically lock the computer up. But when it comes to ISA slots, they don't tend to generate any heat other than like the tiny bit of heat generated by the traces, which is almost negligible. Also, the ISA slot is where these support are needed because this is where I push down in order to get those cars in and these are the places where the motherboard bends or flexes the most. And I think this solution is actually superior than the original like pose solution because this actually distrib distributes the force and provide support across the region instead of just at these two places. So I do wonder why isn't this more widely used? Okay, let's put the motherboard back in. One interesting fact about these AST machines is that they do come with a special type of screw. These screws are always coupled with a washer and they are unified across all AST machines. AST use this type of screws to mount their cars and their motherboards and even their chassis. Which is super convenient because you can mix match screws and they will always work. One screw here, one screw here and one screw here. Now, the new mounting pole doesn't take these type of screw. But incidentally, I just have three spare ASD style screws. So I just grab a random PC chassis screw and it worked well enough. Now this screw is black, so it looks a little out of place, but nobody look at this place, right? this corner of the motherboard and tighten these screws a little bit and i think we are good to go now i think it's time to address the elephant in the room the front panel connector the original owner of this machine modded this connector or these connectors in order to fit them into the sockets of the AT motherboard and it is now next to impossible to figure out the pinout of these wires and try to fit them back in this socket here without the help of some sort of schematic or a reference design however i do have one this is another AST Premium 286 machine that I've gone and taken apart. As you can see here, this machine actually appeared in the last video and this is basically the reference that I'm using. However, after disassembling, I found that AST actually used this header here in order to connect the panel to the motherboard. Which is a good news because I don't have to find out the pinout of this header as long as I got the cable in the header correctly but the real problem is the other header which is the header of the speaker it is this strange four pin header that I don't know whether it is still available anymore but these pin headers here they do work in that socket they are just not so pretty so leave comments below whether I should go hunt down the exact same type of connector or should I just leave it like this but I will order a pin header for this cable because it saves me a lot of trouble not needing to find out the actual pin out of the connector but that is it for this video and bye bye